So this is our final class in mechanism design and today we are continuing with our information design exploration. A dive into this wonderful and fascinating world of information design. So what we did last week is I briefly told you hopefully what information design is all about and what the stories are that you can apply it to, what the settings are that you can apply it to. And we tried to take one of those settings, namely the prosecutor example uh, and the trial example. And we tried to solve uh, that knowing nothing about the setting, but introducing some of the necessary steps along the way. And I feel like I maybe try to do too much with one simple example. So I try to solve the example with you and give you just all the necessary knowledge that you need to know along the way. So this was quite a bit of an overload. What we will do today is we will consider two general approaches to information design. And so once again, if you did not really get the example from last week, not a big deal because we will be basically starting from scratch and going from the beginning to the end, but now just in the general setting, now not in the context of the, of the particular example. So we will spend most of the class on this first approach, the concavification approach, and then we will very briefly talk about we will very briefly talk about the second approach, because it is just so much simpler to to do. To remind you of the big setting that we were working with, we have some state of the world which we denote as omega, and we have a designer and a set of players none of whom know the state of the world in advance. However, all of these players share common prior about the state of the world. So they assign some probability distribution to all states. Now, we can allow in general for n players, so for settings with many players. However, we will mostly be looking today as well at the setting with one player. And in this setting that we're thinking of, each player chooses some action from some action sets. And these action sets are now completely fixed. So in contrast to mechanism design where we were designing the game that players are playing, now in information design this some given game is fixed, but we are designing the player's knowledge about this state of the world. This knowledge is relevant to the players because they are utility functions, VI, in general depend both on actions of all players and on the states of the world. So this knowledge, by manipulating their knowledge of states of the world, we can manipulate the action that they will be choosing. And then the designer tries to select this information structure that the players will get in order to maximize some objective function which is v0 of a and uh, omega. So it also depends on the actions that all players take and on the state of the world in general. The instrument that the designer has in maximizing this objective function, this utility or profit function, is the experiment that the designer can select. And as we argued last time around, an experiment is this object of mu and m, where m is the set of all possible messages that the players can receive, and mu is the mapping from the state set of states to the distribution over these messages. Let us maybe try to draw a graph that will help us kind of visualize this whole setting. So we begin by having a number of states, I'll say omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. And then we have a set of um, messages. So this picture will focus on some player i, not on all players at the same time. But this player i can receive one of multiple messages according to the experiment. So there can be message m1, m2, m3, and so on. And what the experiment tells us is the probability with which a given message is sent to the player in a given state. 
So this is mu of m1 given omega1. This is mu of m1 given omega2, and so on. So for example, let's say we have these links with non-zero probabilities. In general, of course, you have to specify this distribution mu for all messages given all states, so you will have links between every state and every message. But suppose that all of the drink, all of the links that I have not drawn are zero. Meaning that in this case, message m3, you see it is only sent in state omega3. So if you see message m3, it is a conclusive evidence that state omega3 has occurred. But in state omega3, we can also send message m2 with some probability. So message m2 will tell us that either omega2 or omega3 has occurred with some respective probabilities. And similar for m1. So you can see that in state omega1, we always send the same message. But even despite that, uh, even despite the fact that we always send message m1 in state omega1, we can never identify state omega1 precisely, because it is always pulled, in this example, with some state omega2. We can move back to the slide. And talk explicitly about the timing. So I think one of the mistakes that I made last time around, is I tried to solve the model by this backward induction without explicitly going forwards through the model first, without first explicitly introducing all the primitives that we are talking about. So, let us do that now. At stage one, this experiment mu, together with some message set m, is selected by the designer. So this is the part of the diagram that we have already drawn. Then the message m is generated ac according to this experiment, according to this distribution. So you can think that the experiment this black box is the only entity in the model that gets to observe the real state. Neither the designer nor the players get to actually observe the real state, they only get to see the realizations of the experiment. They only get to see these messages that are sent to them by the experiment. Now, whenever a player receives a message, they get to update their beliefs. First of all, they update their beliefs about the state. So they use Bayes' rule to form this posterior belief that I denote by phi i. And the probability that this belief phi i assigns to state omega conditional on some given message m i is given by this Bayes' rule expression. So what is it exactly? In the numerator we have the probability of state omega and message mi occurring simultaneously. So it's the joint probability that the state is omega and the message mi is sent. Meaning that we have this probability of state being omega, which is given by the prior belief, phi zero. And then we multiply that by the conditional probability of observing message mi conditional on state omega. This is just the probability that's given to us by this experiment. So, the numerator is this joint probability of message mi and state omega. What do we have in the denominator? In the denominator we have this probability of the conditional event, the probability of observing message mi overall. The overall probability of observing message mi. Meaning, it is the same, the sum of same probabilities over all possible states. So we are taking the probability of observing message mi is the sum of joint probabilities of observing message mi and state omega prime summed over all states omega prime. This is what Bayes' rule tells us. This is the direct application of Bayes' rule. Actually, let us now go back to this diagram and add this new element to our diagram. So this new element is the po uh, posterior beliefs. So from every message, we get a vector of beliefs, phi i of omega 1, the probability that posterior belief assigns to omega 1, omega 2, and so on. 
and we have the same for every possible message. And I guess the one element that I've missed here is the prior belief phi zero, which tells you how the states are actually distributed from the Exante perspective. So we start with the prior, then some state realizes, some message is sent given the distribution conditional on the state. This message feeds into the beliefs that the player has. That's what we've done so far. And the fact that I've announced last time, the fact about these beliefs is that they should satisfy consistency. And I kind of presented it to you by as an axiom, trying to intuitively uh, justify it. But the truth is, for any Bayesian agent, any experiment mu will generate posterior beliefs that will satisfy consistency. And the proof of it is actually really, really simple. So let us look, let us do this proof very quickly. So we, need, we want to show this belief consistency, meaning that we want to show that the expectation of the posterior from the exante point of view, from the point of view of when the, SH, when the agent has not yet received any message, the expectation of this posterior must be equal to the prior belief phi zero. And the expectation is obviously taken over possible messages that the agent can receive. So let us write this expectation out more explicitly. What is it? As I said, it is the expectation over all possible messages. So we take the sum over all possible messages of the posterior belief given this message, am I, times the probability of this message occurring. And as we already argued, the, prob the total probability of message am I occurring is exactly this denominator here. So it's the sum of mu of mu i given on conditional on omega prime times the exante probability of omega prime summed over all possible states omega prime. But the fact that this bracket coincides with this denominator means that if we plug this phi i into this expression, then the two will cancel out. So in this line, I just plugged in the expression for phi i from here to, well, here. And once again, you can see that the bracket is exactly the same as the denominator, so they can cancel out which is exactly what happens, which means that in the end we are only left with the sum over all possible messages of this numerator. So what is this numerator once again? It is the sum of joint probabilities of observing message mi and state omega. And the sum is taken over all possible messages mi so we take the sum of joint probabilities of message mi and omega over all possible messages mi, meaning that what we arrive to is just the prior belief phi zero of omega. A more mechanical way to see it is that phi zero of omega is independent of message mi, so we can take it kind of out of the sum and multiply it by this sum, and the sum in any given state, overall possible messages of this mu must, must be one. Meaning that in any given state, the sum of probabilities that we send to all possible messages is exactly one, because with probability one, we send one of the possible messages. So in the end, you see, it is really not that difficult to verify that belief consistency is something that must hold in this model. And so far, uh, once again, we are not going, we are not imposing this uh, requirement from the top. We are not saying that we, we are looking for distributions of posteriors that satisfy belief consistency. No, we are going from the grounds up. So we are starting from the experiment and we are showing that for any experiment that you can possibly imagine, you must end up with belief consistency. So your beliefs will be consistent, meaning that your posteriors will, in expectation, average out back to the prior belief. So we've shown that any experiment must generate consistent beliefs. 
about the state of the world. One thing that I did not tell you last time around, because there was no need for it, is that in general, beliefs about the state of the world are not the only kinds of beliefs that we must keep track of. In particular, in general, if you have a if you have game of many players, you also need to track beliefs that player I has over what other players know, what other players think. So in this case, it is sufficient to form beliefs over the messages that other players received. Right? Because what is your line of reasoning in that case? If you are player I, you think, okay, I've had some prior distribution phi zero over states. I got some message, so I updated my belief phi zero over states. I got some message, but I know that everybody else also received some message. So given my new belief over states and the knowledge of how messages are generated given the state, because I know how messages for other players are generated as well, given this knowledge, I can infer or I can form a belief over what messages the other players got. And given that their beliefs will affect what actions they take, and we are playing a game together, so what actions they take is relevant for me in determining which action I should take, this is a belief that's relevant for me. So to, in order to choose the best action, I must form some kind of beliefs over other players' messages. So this is just a step that I want to outline. We will not pay much attention to it, simply because, as I will say, we're mostly looking at the case of uh, one player. And obviously this step is only relevant if you have more than one player. And furthermore, this step is also unnecessary if you are constraining the designer to public persuasion. Meaning, the designer must send the same message to all players. In that case, if I receive some message, I obviously know that this is the same message that everybody else got. The opposite case is, as we argued, private persuasion, where every player receives some private personalized message. In that case, I, if the designer told me something, whispered in my ear, I don't know what the designer whispered in all of your ears. So, But if you have many players and private persuasion is possible, then you must uh, keep track of this step. So this was a long and painful step two. This is the least trivial step of, of, this, of this game, of this meta game, if you want. And then in step three, after every player has formed beliefs according to this Bayes rule, every player will choose some actions that are optimal given their beliefs. So we denote optimal actions in this case as a hat, just for some particular reason. So let us add those to our diagram as well. We see that from beliefs phi, we can move on to determining actions. And player i will select some optimal action ai hat as a function of phi. I guess phi i in this case. And different beliefs will lead player i to choose different actions, which is the whole point. We want to design, we want to induce different beliefs in, the, in player i so that player i chooses different actions. Okay, so this by now is almost all of the setup. We are almost done. The only last step that is left is uh, payoffs. So after all actions are selected, all players receive their respective payoffs. So the designer gets v0 of a hat of phi, where a hat is the profile of all players' actions and phi is the belief of is the profile of all players' beliefs. And all players receive vi, also of a hat of phi. Cool. So this is kind of the framework that we are working with. 